Elementary matrices is a concept that runs in the background of all our matrix work that we do. For example, solving systems of linear equations, we use Gaussian elimination, but elementary matrices helps us explain why Gaussian elimination actually works. So ele elementary matrices directly doesn't help us solve systems of linear equations. Those tools we have for with inverse matrices, determinants, Gaussian elimination, but in the background, we've got ele elementary matrices running. So let's see what I mean by that. So in a, an elementary matrix is a square matrix that I get by performing a single elementary row operation on the identity matrix. Now, just to remind you what the elementary row operations are, we can multiply a row through by a non-zero constant. We can interchange two rows or add a multiple of one row to another. So let's see what it looks like if I take the identity matrix and I perform one row operation on it, because this results in an elementary matrix. So the first one, I take row two and multiply it by five, one, zero, zero, five. This is an elementary matrix, one operation on the identity matrix. Let's look at the next one, row two plus minus three ones times row one. So row one stays the same, row three stays the same, but I take row two and add minus three times row one. So it's minus three, one, zero. Another elementary matrix. Let's see what happens if I interchange two rows. Here I swap row two and four. So row one stays the same, row two becomes row four. Row three stays the same, and row four becomes row two. So these are just examples of elementary matrices. We get them by performing a row operation on the identity matrix. Now, if I perform a row operation on any matrix, that is the same as actually multiplying that matrix with the elementary matrix. So rather than doing a row operation, we can do a matrix multiplication. So just note, a row operation is easier to perform, but this explains what the row operation actually is in terms of matrices. So let's take a look. I've got a matrix B here. If I take this, take this matrix B and I do some row operations on it, and we're going to do very specific row operations, we're going to do Gaussian elimination. We want to get to the identity matrix, but we'll get there eventually. But let's take a look. If I take matrix B and I take row 1 and multiply it by a half, then I get 1 minus 2, 6 minus 8. So let us say the matrix, the elementary matrix E1 is the matrix I get if I perform the same operation on the identity matrix. So take the identity matrix, multiply row 1 by a half. And we're working in 2 by 2, so it'll be 2 by 2. So row 1, I multiply by a half of the identity. This is my elementary matrix. So what we are saying, if you take this elementary matrix, E1, E1 times B, a half, 0, 0, 1. Multiply it with B, 2 minus 4, 6 minus 8. Then I get the matrix that's the result of this row operation. So a half times 2 gives me 1, naught, minus 2, naught, naught, 6, naught, minus 8. So there we can see. So the row operation I perform on B is exactly the same as multiplying B with the elementary matrix. And we're going to use this, but I'm not going to show this for every row operation. But let's keep going. Let's do another row operation on B. Gaussian elimination, I want a zero there. So I'm taking row two and adding minus six times row one to it. So what happens? One minus two, zero. Now minus two times minus six is 12. 12 plus eight, minus eight gives me four. All right. So what would that elementary matrix, let's say that is E2. If I perform E2 on the identity, or if I perform this row operation on the identity matrix, take row 2 and add minus 6 times row 1 to it of, on I2. So row 1 stays the same. Now row 2, I'm adding minus 6 times row 1, so it's minus 6 times 1. Remember, to find E2, I do the row operation on the identity matrix I2. Okay. I would like a leading one now in this position, so we take row two and multiply it by a quarter. 
So we get 1 minus 2, that stays the same, 0, 1. I've multiplied row 2 by a quarter. So what would the corresponding elementary matrix be? And you'll see shortly why we go through all of these. So take the identity matrix, multiply row 2 by a quarter. I've got 1, 0, 0, a quarter. All right. And then our last step is to get a, a 0 up there. So we take row 1 and add 2 times row 2 to it. And I get 1, 0, 0, 1. So what would that elementary matrix E4 be? I'm going to just make some space here. If I get E4, E4 is then the matrix, take the identity matrix, take row 1 and add 2 times row 2 to it, so you get 1, 2, 0, 1. All right, so what have we done now? We've performed Gaussian elimination on B to get to the identity matrix. Now, for each row operation, we've, we've generated the matching elementary matrix. Now, we saw to get from the first step to the second step was multiplying E1 with B. So to get from this matrix, this E1 times B, to the next matrix, we multiply it on the left by E2. And so on, E3, E4. So after you've made these multiplications, you will get the identity matrix, I2. So you can go check that. Take matrix B and multiply it on the left, I1, then I2, then I3, and then I4. And you will get the identity matrix. So we can write the identity matrix as a product of matrices. Now, let's rewrite that. With all these elementary matrices, we've now seen that E4, E3, E2, E1, B gives me IN. Now, watch order is important. Sometimes they can commute, but not always. So we just stick to the process. We first multiplied E1 was the first thing we did, so we multiply B with E1 first, then E2, then E3, then E4. But now we see this equation. I've got something times B gives me the identity. That means that whatever I have there is B inverse, because you need to know inverses before looking at this section. So hopefully you're aware of what an inverse matrix is. So this is just B inverse, because I know B inverse times B is the identity matrix, and the inverse is unique. So I can write B inverse as a product of elementary matrices, E4, E3, E2, and E1. And if you remember, how did we find the inverse of a matrix? We took a matrix, augmented with the identity matrix, performed Gaussian elimination on it, and when identity was on the left, what was on the right was the inverse. And you can see here now, because the inverse I get with all those row operations, one at a time. So that is the inverse of my matrix. So we can use elementary matrices to find that inverse of a matrix. All right, now the next step. Every elementary matrix is invertible. And the inverse is also an elementary matrix. So we're saying if I've got an elementary matrix, I can find the inverse of that matrix. So let's take a look at these same elementary matrices we have and to find the inverses of them. Now, remember I found E1 by taking row 1 of the identity and multiplying it by a half. So to get the inverse of E1, we're going to do, what? let's say, the opposite thing. We're going to take the identity and multiply the first row with 2. And that's the inverse of E1. Now, you know how to find inverses of matrices. You can go through the process. You can use the shortcut for a 2 by 2 to find the inverse. You can multiply these two to see you get to the identity. But that is what E1's inverse is going to look like. All right, so let's see what E2's inverse is going to look like. Well, for E2, we took row 2 and add minus 6 times row 1 to it. So the Inverse operation will be to take row 2 and add 6 times row 1 to it. So the inverse is then just 1, 0, 6, 1. And again, go check it. Check that that is the inverse of E2. E3, I took row 2 and multiplied by a quarter. So the inverse operation will be to take row 2 and multiply it by 4. And that's the inverse elementary matrix. And then E4 was again adding a multiple of a row to another one. We added 2 times row 2 to row 1, so 
the inverse operation would be adding minus 2 times rho 2 to rho 1. And there we go. Those are the inverse inverses of the elementary matrices. But now what do we want to do with them? Let's go back to our equation we had. We saw E4 times E3 times E2 times E1 times B gives me the identity matrix, I2. So if I start multiplying on the left with E4 inverse, E3 inverse, E2 inverse, E1 inverse, what's going to happen? E4, E3, E2, and E1B. So if I multiply on the left by all of these products, let's see on this side, E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, E4 inverse, and I. What you notice through associativity, E4 and E4 inverse are next to each other, and we wrote it like that for a reason. That's why we chose the order as we did. That gives me the identity. Then I multiply, and that gives me the identity. Another identity and another identity. And I'll end up with the matrix B is then E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, E4 inverse. So I can write B as a product of elementary matrices because all these inverses are elementary matrices. So if I've got a matrix B, I can write B inverse as a product of elementary matrices, and I can write B as a product of elementary matrices. In the next part, we're going to look at some properties of elementary matrices and do some more calculations with them.